Hey everybody, Jay with Sandy Forever and Krista's coming. I'm coming. She had to hit record and here she is. Jay Hi Krista's everyone. Sandy Forever and today we are interviewing Krista's parents who have been married over 50 years. Hello. This is Hello. Gerald and Carol. Hi. And yeah, we're gonna have fun today. Exactly. So first of all, these are my parents, so I get to ask them these very pointed questions that you guys on Facebook <laughs> actually gave us the questions. So that's really cool. One of the people you know uh, who gave us the question is Sandy Ladd, who's Sandy Castillo oh, now. Okay. <laughs> I figured my parents probably knew you more as Sandy Ladd. Um, so we're gonna go through a little bit of questions and if you guys wanna take turns, um, Jay and I, Jay, you're gonna uh, read um, the blue ones and I'm gonna read the pink ones. Okay. <laughs> so well, you already did the introduction. My parents, um, how long have you guys been married, first of all? 53 years. 53 years, September 7th. 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 And what year was that? 19? 1968. That was a good year. The wild 60s. <laughs> the wild 60s. They're from the 60s, folks. <laughs> okay, and then um, how old are you guys, too? Do you want to disclose your age? That's okay. I'm 74. I'm going to be 75, right? And I'm 79. I thought you were already 75 because Dad put 75. Yeah, you're 75. Oh, I'm 75. Uh oh. Dad had 75 on your candle this year. I don't know if that was wrong or you were wrong. It was 75. <laughs> you get this age, you, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I don't keep track anymore either. So, okay. First of all, I wanted each of you guys to take turns and answer um, what was your favorite childhood memory? Why don't you go first? Should right? I go first? Uh, I used to go to a church camp. And I just liked going to camp. And and they really taught me a lot about the Lord. I think if I hadn't gone to camp, I wouldn't know the Lord as much as I do now. And one time I made a decision to receive Jesus as my Savior. And I liked the person that explained it to me. And I just started a relationship with him, and it was awesome. Okay, Dad, what about you? Oh, I, I just remember a time when I was about five years old and I lived in Applegate, Oregon, a very small town. It said it was 35 people, but we never saw that many people. But um, we lived about one block from the Applegate River. And we would get on a hot summer day, we would walk down the hill and the ground would be so hot you'd have to run to shady spots <laughs> and then the next shady spot and then swim in the river for half a day and then come home mm -hmm. and it was just beautiful country and that was a, a beautiful memory of mine. Mm -hmm. The neatest part is I actually got to see that because yeah. you, you took us there and there wasn't the cabin anymore. Wasn't there a church on that hill? Yeah, my dad had built a Assembly of God church, and that church is still going. Yeah, but it's really it's pretty. I don't know yeah. how you guys crossed that street, though. It looked pretty dangerous. <laughs> they had logging trucks that would come through there at about 45 or 50 miles an hour, and they couldn't stop if they wanted to because they'd be so yeah. loaded. So it was dangerous. <laughs> it was dangerous. And I remember you saying something about your dog um, saved you from a snake there. Or was that? No, that was my sister saved me from the snake. Um, oh, okay. That was when I was about two or three. Uh huh. And there was a rattlesnake all coiled up out by the uh, chicken coop. And I called my sister, Lorraine, and I said, Sis, come look. There's a funny looking chicken here. <laughs> funny looking chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and here is a rattlesnake all coiled up and shaking its tail and everything. And she ran and got my dad, and my dad killed it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, thank God you're still here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you want to ask them? Yeah, so how did you guys meet? Who goes first? Whoever would like to. Well, you can go back and forth, too. Well, I was <laughs> dating his roommate. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to get good. And his roommate introduced me. <laughs> it's a love triangle. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then his roommate dropped me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> broke up with sad. me. And I wrote this letter to him. But <laughs> I thought the letter wasn't saying that I was sad or anything. I was saying how, you know, God is in control and things can go good <laughs> and no matter what. <laughs> 
<laughs> but he came over. Uh, oh, well, you want to go from Yeah, there. you want to tell your side of the story. <laughs> well, the first time I met her was before this letter came, but she had um, asked my friend, my roommate, if she could come by our pool and do some studying. She was going to UCLA. And so uh, he told me she would be there and I should say hi. So uh, she was down by the pool in a bathing suit. Oh, well, no wonder you. <laughs> and I went down and introduced myself. <laughs> well, because he told you you should. <laughs> yes, yes. I, was, I was being very courteous. Courteous, yes. And then when uh, he, she sent him the letter breaking up, Rich, he's still our friend, by the way. He was best man at our wedding, and I was best man at his wedding, and we were still good friends. Um, he asked me, would you just go see and talk to her and see if she's all right? So I did. And the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you uh, were her knight in shining armor, came to help I her. I was so concerned. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what was your first impression of each other? We kind of heard a little bit of your first impression. It was in the bathing suit, but, but what was your first impression? <laughs> uh, he was a very quiet person. <laughs> and my dad was very quiet. My dad um, worked for, uh, during World War II, aeronautic or skunk works, and he couldn't talk about what he was doing because it was dangerous. But anyway, or what he decided to invent. So, um, so I, I guess I must have liked him because he was quiet like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Mysterious. <laughs> In fact, I remember going out to eat with him and he would sit there and not say anything and and I, I said I don't know the Lord though. this is kind of boring and recording right and and then he would talk and then he was very interesting mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so what did you guys do on your first date? Well, he has to say what his first impression. Unless well, he already it was, did. It was the bathing suit. Well, maybe he had more of an impression. <laughs> did you have more of an impression? Just a okay. little bit. That uh, this this girl is different than the ones I had been dating. This is a very good girl. I mean, uh, no loose morals or anything. She seemed very, very, very nice and. Uh, Moral. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what did you guys do on your first date? Okay, let me do this one. This was a good one. <laughs> so we we had coffee a couple times and then we had an actual date. We went to Disneyland and uh we rode some of the rides and then I bought her dinner. They used to have the Blue Bayou restaurant there right by uh uh Pirates of, the Pirates of the Caribbean. It's kind of inside of it a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, and you're, it's like you're outside in watching the boats go by and there's crickets and everything. And they serve veal uh, parmesan. And they had strolling violinists that would come by to your table and serenade so, you. That's an incredible first date. Yeah, <laughs> and then when we stepped outside, it was right when the fireworks went off. And Tinkerbell came down. <laughs> the and I thought, this is a sign. I'm sure it's a sign. <laughs> Tinkerbell is definitely a sign. If yeah. it comes down in the middle of your, if she comes down in the middle of your date, you know. What was your impression of that That's first awesome. date? That's awesome. Doesn't get any that. I think it was wonderful. Except I wasn't. I didn't want to get romantic because <laughs> she was a good girl. <laughs> because I was into nursing. And I was a career lady, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to. <laughs> you had goals, and you didn't want him messing those up. <laughs> but I did enjoy the first date. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was sounds really romantic. You guys, I think, still have a silhouette thing that you guys Somewhere, got yeah. done on yes. that first date. Yes. Where they draw a silhouette of you guys. Yeah, I wonder where that is. I think it's in one of your albums. I've seen it many times. Yes. 
Praise God. <laughs> so, okay. So, how long did you date before you got married? Approximately a year and a half. Um, she had to finish college. Uh, she wanted to graduate from UCLA with her nursing degree and everything. And so we had quite a long engagement mm -hmm. and dating and so on before. And, and I was happy to wait. Mm -hmm. And um, he really respected me. You know, he didn't push me to, to do anything. In fact, one time we got pretty close and um, and he quit because he didn't want me to feel guilty. Boy, boy, he really cared about me when he came over to see me. Respectful. You know, and now he was being very respectful. Yeah. Okay, so it guys... worked. <laughs> <laughs> so how did uh, he propose, or how did you propose? Which time? <laughs> Why do you start with the first one and go from there? And how many times did it take? <laughs> I think I have proposed altogether three or four times. I think three. Wow. And she told me no and no and then yes. Well, that's but, good. You know, she lived at uh, an apartment with some roommates in Santa Monica and I lived in Whittier. And it was about a 45 minute drive to see her all the time. And I did it three or four times a week Wow! <laughs> anyway, on the freeways. <laughs> and we were down by the Santa Monica Pier at the beach and we would walk along the pier and see the sights. And then we would walk along the beach. And I think the first time <clears throat> after that, we'd been dating maybe six or seven months and we got back to the car and I thought this was the perfect time to ask her, so it was such a beautiful night and everything, and she said no. <laughs> <laughs> How come you didn't give up? Well, <laughs> all right, I asked her the second time, similar situation, and she said no, and I did give up. I told God, I said, okay, uh, apparently Maybe this is not the lady you want for me, and I'm all right with that. I'll still serve you, and I love you, God, and if you want something else for me, that's fine. And suddenly she changed her mind and said <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, wow. So she didn't say yes on the time you asked her. Or she said yes on the later, later on. Later on, and yeah. came back and said, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, right now, I, I wanted to make sure God wanted me to marry him. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I put out a fleece. And the other thing that was interesting to me, the Bible says I'm supposed to be submissive to him. And he's supposed to lead us in the things of the Lord. And um, I thought... I am more, I'm stronger than him. I'm gonna, you know, I need somebody maybe stronger than me. Anyway, I put out a fleece and I don't remember what that was. And I don't know if you know what a fleece is, but it, it's like, God, if you want me to do this, this will happen. Like show me a, some a sign. sign. And then he showed me a sign that I should marry him. Do you remember what the sign is? No. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was a good sign. <laughs> So I, I realized I, he wants me to marry him. I felt like that was the number one thing that's important. Is it what God wants? Mm -hmm. And is it somebody that God wants you to marry? It's because I needed to be born. <laughs> that is true. That's very true. That is true. I appreciate it. But now that, that we've been married this long, I can look back and see how his personality and my personality, we need each other. Opposites. Yeah, we're opposites, mm -hmm. and, and it's good that we're opposites because he's very sensitive to people and I'm not. And yet he is almost too sensitive, so I help him not be sensitive. Yeah, you guys are happy medium yes. together. <laughs> Jay and I are like that too, exact opposites. Awesome. So um, where did you get married? Panorama City in uh, San Fernando Valley in California. And it was in September. It was one of the hot days in California. It was 104 degrees. Oh, wow. And the church didn't have good air conditioning. It had a little bit. But uh, 
it was up where her her dad paid for the wedding, so he picked the church and everything. And we so. had two pastors. We had one that my mother hmm. wanted, right? Yes. And yeah. we had one that uh, church. We wanted we our to. pastor too. We were going to a Swedish Luth Swedish Covenant Church, Swedish Presbyterian mm -hmm. Church. And it was in downtown LA and it was a very good pastor. And that's where the wedding was? No. No, no he, it was he, at the He came up to Panorama City. He came City, up to Panorama City. Maybe twenty miles. So whose church was that that you got married at? It was my mom and dad's yeah. church. Okay. Is and it that was the, a brethren church, I think. Is that the one that we used to visit when I was a kid? Is that that same the church? The one in Silmar? Or is that a little a tiny church? church? No, this was a pretty big church. Huh. Hmm. So maybe I've never been there. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know, but we, I was glad that we went to church before we got married um, because there was a class at that church, that covenant church, that talked about what, what is true love. And that lesson, I think, is what helped us stay through all the hard times. And he took it really seriously, almost more than me. And, and the lesson said that true love was not emotion. It was a decision to care about somebody else's well-being. Hmm. So it know. was, he taught us about agape love, erotic love, and brotherly love, and all this. And uh, how if you base your marriage on erotic love, and just the sexual feelings, and getting along, and being happy, then when you hit hard times, everything falls apart. Mm -hmm. But if you base your marriage on agape love, where you have made the decision that you're going to care for this person and take care of them, and and no during good times, bad times, whenever, then that will sustain your marriage. And then the other feelings, if you show agape love long enough, even during the hard times, then the erotic and the uh, and Philadelphia love and all the rest, they grow stronger. Mm -hmm. And they kind of come back each time stronger. Because yes. those are kind of yeah. feelings that kind of come and go. Yeah, I think that saved our marriage, you know. And it's neat that he took that seriously. I mean, mm -hmm. he, you never, never ever changed that. I stayed committed to you this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I made the decision. Awesome. Uh, next one. Okay, this is, one's a funny one. This one was off of our Facebook. Too. What was one little quirk that bugged you in the beginning that seems funny now, or that you love now? About each other. Well, we have to do the part that says you funny now or love now. <laughs> what if it still bugs you? Just tell us the quirk. <laughs> on our honeymoon, <clears throat> on our honeymoon, we wow, went. It started that early. It started that early. <laughs> We were up in San Francisco and we got on a cable car and we're riding and it stopped for a minute and she got off and wanted the conductor to hold the cable car while she took a picture. You can't, you can't hold a cable car. And I got so embarrassed and we got in our first fight on the honeymoon. On a cable car. Her family is very outgoing and forward and the world revolves around them and stop for what I'm doing and I'm kind of quiet and shy and want to stay in the background <laughs> and she's still very outgoing and I'm very introverted <laughs> but it doesn't bug me that much anymore. <laughs> I'm used to it. You just go That's hide awesome. in, a cl in a corner, right? <laughs> what was it that... I'm, I'm you, trying to think. I don't know. You said my being quiet was... Yeah, that. him being too quiet. You know, and and he wouldn't tell me stuff. He'd sit there, you know. And I knew there was a lot going on in his head. <laughs> but he wouldn't tell me. <laughs> but eventually, eventually you got where you talk more. And then, and that even affected us praying together because mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to pray together, but see, I talked too much, and he didn't like that. 
<laughs> so you did all the talking to God. <laughs> so he, he didn't want to pray with me. I think he had a lot of trouble praying with me in the beginning, didn't you? I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a sermon? <laughs> but we That's pray awesome. every day now. Mm -hmm. So and, uh, and have you gotten better at letting him do I was just going to ask, do you both do, or you still do? No. And he listens. He's got a remote thing that he says every day. <laughs> but I like it. Uh -huh. He includes every every kid. And well, he's very, every, like, he's thought about this, and this is the perfect combination of prayer we need. <laughs> it's not just randomness. We always start by praising God and thanking Him for all He's done and, you know, honoring Him. And then... Then I go into the people that I love that I hope God will take care of, and I list them and mm -hmm. and want, you know, pray for yeah. all them. Yeah, so he prays first. Yeah. So that's the important part. He prays first. <laughs> <laughs> then if he falls asleep during yours, it's okay. <laughs> so I'm thinking that he's more of the... Uh, mechanical thinker or what is structured what is that the, the nerd and you're more the feelings in the <laughs> is that what it is <laughs> yeah he's that way even with being on time mm -hmm. we have to be on time we can't be late yeah and my parents were always late <laughs> <laughs> yeah i still remember that because he would stand uh for church you know when we were gonna go in the morning he'd be uh, 15 minutes tell shaking his keys at the front door <laughs> and he'd say 15 minutes <laughs> and then he'd be like 10 minutes I don't think you moved that whole time <laughs> and I started panic 10 minutes how am I going to pull this off <laughs> well I figured one way to get her family if we wanted them to come to dinner at 4 o'clock on in a certain afternoon or something yeah. We would tell them three o'clock. So that they'd be there. So that five. they'd be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's always a way you can work it. Yes. That's well, funny. and this, you know, you so conditioned me that somebody was telling me when I needed to be ready that when Jay and I first married, one of our first fights was the fact that he was upset that I wasn't ready to go. And I was like, but you didn't call out the time. <laughs> like, nobody told me I was, I had 10 minutes. You didn't give a countdown? I didn't. <laughs> you I learned that I needed to, though. <laughs> if I didn't have a countdown, how am I going to know? <laughs> and so we were really, really late to our first thing. <laughs> okay, so um, who between you has the best sense of humor? I know this one. He does. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I do because I usually have to explain jokes to her. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, my mom and dad were very serious. Yeah. So. Yeah, my family was always funny and having fun. Yeah, so I think that's another way we're, we're good for each other, isn't it? Yeah. He light he lightened you up and you you reel him in. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what is the best way to show appreciation to your spouse? How do you guys work that? To show appreciation to each other? Well, um, I think by doing things that you don't particularly want to do, but they want to do it. Um, right now we're very involved in Good News Club and we've got four after school programs going for a week after school and she is very involved in them she leads them and everything and the way I show appreciation to her is by I go but I am not really excited about doing it the way she is mm -hmm. but so. he really he does the electronics and I really need him mm -hmm. so so once in a while, I used to say, "Well, after club, I'll pay for the, I'll pay for a restaurant. Let's go out to eat." And she stopped doing that. What? <laughs> oh, it was bribing. It was bribes. It was. And then now she pulled the bribes away. Oh man. Now I have to be good for nothing. Now you just have to appreciate her for nothing. So, mom, what's your way that you show appreciation well, to dad? This reminds me of when we were learning about personalities. 
Mm -hmm. That was really good because I'm kind of like a lion. Mm -hmm. And and then I realized he is a, what's that dog that likes a Golden lot? retriever. Golden retriever. Old faithful. And we were struggling a lot for a while there. And when I realized he's like a golden retriever, I thought, I've got to pet him more often. <laughs> 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 it's like that show. Uh, oh Doris gosh. Day did a movie called uh, How to Train Your Husband. Mm, the, Wasn't yeah. it? And it, yeah, that it was, was the, the fact that her mother-in-law or somebody gave her a book on how to train dogs. And so she used all the techniques <laughs> for training dogs. <laughs> So I guess you have to pet him more often, <laughs> yeah. or maybe not, you know, let him lead a little bit. And not that's right. <laughs> but uh, but I I really have got to say thank you and appreciation mm -hmm. and complimenting him more. Mm -hmm. And it's been a lot better since. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like he's noticed it, <laughs> but it's been better between us. <laughs> yeah, we have a good relationship. Yeah, we have a really good relationship now. Wow. Mm -hmm. that, you know, I re would have realized how good it was. Once you get past the hard times, mm -hmm. you know, it's better. It just seems like, you know, I don't know. I'm so glad we got through some of the hard times because... Well, that brings us to our next question, which is how do you keep going even oh. during the hard times? How do you keep going? <laughs> well, remembering that... Hard times builds character. No. <laughs> I hate that. Oh, I'm so sick of getting character. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. No, hard times don't last. And if you trust God and keep, uh, you know, trusting Him, hard times pass. Um, Sometimes you can feel like it's really an attack of Satan coming on your family or something. And I remember one time, uh, I just, it's the only time I have ever really talked to Satan, but I told him, I said, you know, this isn't doing you any good. All the hard times you're bringing on me, I'm going to keep praising the Lord, and I'm going to keep going for the Lord. And so the more you do it, the more I'm going to praise God. And things got better. Because he didn't want you praising anymore. No. He got sick of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, various ways, but it's mainly remembering that God, God brings um, healing. He brings resolve to your problems and just trust in the Lord. And for me, there was a lot of different things. Um, you got to be careful because it's, it's personal and you don't want to share it too much. But I did go to a pastor and, and somebody that would be um, mm -hmm. confidential to pray for me mm -hmm. and for the situation. And, and then the Bible verses that he gave me, he gave me one that um, just stood out to me. And so I dated it. And um, I looked back later and God did it. Mm -hmm. So I would claim Bible verses and and also I think counseling really helped. I don't know. He I don't think he really wanted to go to counseling, did you? No. <laughs> but see how much he loves me? He went anyway. <laughs> did you guys go to lunch? Afterwards? Huh? Go to lunch did afterwards. She did lunch you? Afterwards? I don't think she did. No. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know if you felt like counseling help, but I did. Maybe you didn't. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. But <laughs> That's the way it is with but guys. just getting support. Because a lot of guys don't want to go to counseling and don't like it. But it did help me. Mm -hmm. And everybody's different, too. Some things, like, yeah. it, it helps for you to talk and get things out, and other people, other things help, Yeah. too. And since we had trouble talking anyway, you know, it helped us talk and I could understand mm -hmm. where he's coming from and, and all that. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so one we're gonna, more question. So we're going to finish up on this one. Uh, what is your number one favorite piece of advice for a successful marriage? Don't answer do all I get once. to do it? You both Either, get to. either one of you okay. can start. You might have something different, okay. each of you. This, 
I don't know if you can see it. Can you, can you guys see it? Probably not be able to see it, but maybe you guys can read it. Um, I really like this poem because it says marriage takes three. And, and of course it's the third person. And, and I felt like he wanted us to get married, so he helped us through all the hard times. And, um, and I really believe that God is a part of this because it's his, it's his plan. You know, from Adam and Eve way on, that we all have this wonderful relationship with a marriage partner. And so, um, so I think to include the Lord in your marriage is very important. And when we were dating, we, had, we read the Bible together, but we had a lot of problems uh, praying together. And I'm glad we finally did. And it happened because Krista gave us a lot of trouble. <laughs> I didn't have said that. I July. wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, she was a good girl. <laughs> but it scared me. So I, I said, we've got to pray. <laughs> I'm a good girl. I was never any trouble. <laughs> I should have said that, Krista. No, I'm, I'm just sorry. Can't. No, you can tell. <laughs> I'm real. I'm real with, with... All teenagers are trouble. <laughs> But it was good. It made us start trying to pray. And the other problem was when I had trouble. See, I helped you. Yes, you did. <laughs> and then uh, work was, was a problem, too. So I felt like I almost couldn't go to work unless he prayed with me. Mm -hmm. So so I, I think that's the main thing is that God is a part of your marriage because he can really help with, mm -hmm. with everything. He help us forgive, help us to love and look over stuff. And then right now it's like, I don't know. I don't have to look over anything. I think you are so awesome. He's been so good to me. <laughs> I'm enjoying being with him all the time, 24-7. <laughs> My number one piece of advice is don't always base your marriage on how you feel, but base it on a commitment. Uh, we learned that uh, real agape love is a decision to have total concern for another person's well-being uh, physically, spiritually, and mentally born out in action. So if you love your spouse with a this type of a decision, even when you don't particularly like that person and you're mad at them, but you keep that decision, I'm going to maintain this marriage, those hard times pass. And then the love, the uh, emotional love grows stronger and stronger and you know it's a at our age it becomes a quiet like embers on a fire it's not raging and everything but it's a quiet nice beautiful love that we have for each other and I think that's what really made our marriage is we stuck with it through the hard times and they got better mm -hmm. because of a decision we had made I love cool. that. I love that. Is there anything else you want to add that you'd love to talk about or anything? Well, hang in there. The first 53 years are the hardest, then it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the best year ever. <laughs> so stay healthy so you can make it to that long, right? Right. <laughs> Eat healthy so you can make it that long. <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you guys so much for yes, doing this welcome. for us. And well, we enjoyed it. Yes. Thank you. And Happy New Year's. We're and here. And God bless all your marriages out there. Yes. yes thank you. Yes. Thank you so God much. God can help you through all the hard times. Yeah. Um, Dad, do you want to kind of close us out in prayer and then Jay will close us out? I'd love that. Heavenly Father, thank you for the institution of marriage that you have ordained that a man and it should be with a woman and that live together and get along together. And thank you that you are with each marriage and you can help anybody that's having trouble, help them seek you, help them turn to you during the hard times and uh, just bless all the marriages that hear this recording. Watch over them and help them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, guys, uh, Jay and Krista, say Eddie forever. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side.
Love you guys, and say goodbye to my parents while I turn off the camera. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> thank you for them doing the interview. Yeah, thank you.